Hello, welcome to the video lecture of the story In the Flood by Thakavi Shivashankara Pilla. Let's begin with the short introduction to the author. Thakavi Shivashankara Pilla, the master storyteller of Malayalam literature, transformed the literary arena with his empathetic vision and eloquent prose. He was a prolific writer who could capture the poignancy and beauty of life through his insightful portraitures. His stories follow the realistic tradition and are renowned for its vivid and perceptive analysis of human nature and its complexities. Some of his works have been adapted to the silver screen. His major works include Adi Urukugal that was published in 1945, Tagayada Gadagal, a collection of short stories in 1946, Toteda Magan in 1947, Chemin, which was published in 1956, Anji Pennangan, published in 1961, End of Akil Jeevitham, an autobiographical work in 1961, Tiranyadatha Kadagal, yet another short story collection in 1965, and Kair in 1978. For his outstanding contribution to literature, the nation honored him with the Jnanipid Award in 1984 and the Padma Pushin in 1985. He was also awarded the Eritha Chen Puraskaram in 1994. Now let's move on to a reading and analysis of the story. In the flood, the temple was the highest point in the village. Here stood the god neck deep in water. Water, water everywhere. The villagers had all left for the mainland. Only those who owned boats had left a few behind to guard the houses. There were 67 children huddled in the three rooms in the attic of the temple. There were also 356 men, as well as dogs, cats, goats, and fowls, all living together in great amity. No quarrels. For two nights and a day, Chennaparayan braved the flood alone. He had no boat. It was now three days since his landlord deserted him to save himself. Chenna had made a raised platform in the hut with coconut husks and poles at the first sight of the surging waters. He stayed indoors for two days, hoping that the waters would recede. How could he leave the place so soon? In the plot were a few bunches of banana and some hay, and leaving the place would certainly mean leaving these at the mercy of pilferers. Now the water had risen above the platform and sunk a portion of the thatched roof too. Chenna called out from inside. But who was there to answer? His woman who was pregnant, four children, a cat and a dog, his dependents. And he knew that his end and theirs was near as it would not take longer than a few hours for the whole hut to be submerged. It had been raining heavily and incessantly for three days now. Chenna somehow got out of the hut by making a crack in the thatch and looked around. At some distance in the north, was a catamaran. Chenna cried out aloud to the boatmen. Luckily, they heard him and started in his direction. He quickly pulled out his woman and children as well as the cat and the dog through the crack in the roof. By then, the catamaran had drawn up. The children were clambering onto the catamaran. Chenna cha, hu he. Chenna heard someone shouting to him from the west. He turned around. Come on here. It was Madhyatara Kunyapen calling from his rooftop. Chenna hastily drew his wife onto the catamaran. The cat also leaped on board in an instant. No one took notice of the dog who was still sniffing around in the western end of the hut. The catamaran started moving. It was soon in mid-water again. So, as the story begins, we get a very realistic depiction of the havoc caused by a flood. And the author begins by saying that the god was also neck deep in water. There was water everywhere. And in page 67, you have this line. There were 67 children huddled in the three rooms in the attic of the temple. There were also 356 men as well as dogs, cats, gods and fowls. So in the time of flood, people are left with no choice. They have to make do with whatever that they have. Tagari highlights the terror and panic caused by natural calamities and man's helplessness in the face of an unmoving nature. And Chenaparayan is initially unwilling to leave his hut 
as he didn't want to leave his worldly belongings behind so he was talking about a few bunches of banana and some hay and he thinks that you know pilferers or thieves would come and take away his possessions if he leaves the hut behind so he didn't want to go but when the situation becomes dire when it looks like you know the entire family will be drowned soon he becomes frantic he becomes frantic with worry and then you know as he tries to escape he pulls everybody out he pulls his wife his uh, children his cat his dog everything out but the problem is that the dog went around sniffing somewhere and didn't notice the fact that you know the boat is now slowly moving away so the dog got left behind we'll continue with the story the dog came back to the rooftop chenna's vessel was now at some distance away from the house he could see it flying away he started mourning in great pain making sounds like the cries of a hapless human being but who was there to hear him he ran around the house from end to end sniffing and whimpering a frog who was sitting quietly on the rooftop was alarmed by all this unexpected noise it dived into the water in front of the dog splosh the dog started a shiver ran down his spine he stood there for a long time staring at the ripples of ripples the frog had created then again he started sniffing around here and there maybe he was searching for food another frog leaped into the water after urinating into his nostrils this made him very restive and he started sneezing violently then he wiped his face clean with one of his forelimbs the torrential rain started again the dog huddled up and suffered it through his master had by then reached ambalapura night a huge crocodile floated past that house gently brushing its half submerged roof as it did so the dog lowered its tail in fear and started barking but the crocodile just moved off as though it hadn't noticed anything that hunger tormented animal wailed from the rooftop peering out into the dark and cloudy sky his plaintive cry reached places far off the sympathetic wind god took it to distant lands and those few on guard of the houses the soft hearted among them must have said listen to that dog moaning from the roof his master must now be eating his supper from the sea coast at the end of the supper as is his wont he might still keep a share for the dog the dog cried aloud continually for a long time then the cry became softer and softer before it stopped from some house in the north the man on guard was chanting the ramayana for some time the dog turned westward as though listening to the chant and then after a while he started groaning again and making loud throat rending noises the silence of the night was rent again by the sweet chant of the ramayana now once again the dog remained silent a little longer this time to listen to the mellifluous chant of the ramayana the gentle music seemed to dissolve into the whiff of a cold breeze now nothing was to be heard except the sound of the wind and of the gentle breeze on the roof chenna's dog was lying down its breath heavy on itself occasionally muttering something to itself in despair a fish popped up here and a frog leaped out there at which the dog got up to bark and growl by turns early morning the dog started groaning in low tones he was elaborating the notes of a raga fit to melt the hearts of the listeners frogs stared at him in amazement he in turn watched them swishing past him and sinking under water after swimming across in an angle he surveyed the thatched roofs remaining above the water level they were his hopes though all were desolate no fire burned anywhere he mouthed the fleas biting his body and occasionally scratched at his chin with his hind legs in order to drive them away the sun shone for a while he dozed off in the sunlight he jumped up and barked when the shadow of the banana leaf swaying in the breeze fell on the rooftop then the clouds swallowed the sun it was dark once again the wind created ripples in the water carcasses of dead animals were seen floating around in the waves they were moving in all directions they seemed afraid of nothing the dog looked at all that in great desire he growled a small boat was moving swiftly at some distance away from the house 
the dog saw it and got up wagging his tail he watched it move till it disappeared into the grove of palms it started whistling the dog sat down on its limbs spinning himself on his four limbs and gazed around helplessness writ large in his eyes the drizzle stopped a small boat came from the house in the north and stopped near the palm tree on seeing it the dog wagged his tail and sighed and growled the boatman picked a tender coconut from the palm and broke it and drank up the juice he then rowed off a crow perching on a tree at a distance swooped down on the rotting carcass of a huge bull even as the dog was barking at it lustily the crow put its beak deep into the rotting flesh and started eating at it with an air of unconcern after some time having had its fill the crow flew off a green bird twittered from the leaf of the banana tree near the house the dog became restless and barked the bird too flew away a colony of ants afloat on water was washed on the rooftop the ants were saved the dog kissed them thinking perhaps that they were eatable at this he sneezed again and again his face turning red and puffed up in the afternoon two men came that way in a small boat the dog was grateful and barked and wagged its tail he spoke to them in a language close to human speech he stepped into the water all set to jump onto the boat see here is a dog said one of the men the dog moaned in gratitude as though he could see the man's sympathy let it be there said the other the dog opened his mouth as if he was chewing something and made some inarticulate sounds he prayed hard and tried to jump into the boat the boat moved off the dog groaned once again one of the boatmen turned back god that cry came not from the boatman it was from the dog god so the dog here waits eagerly for his owner to come back and claim him if not his owner then anybody any human being would sympathy to come back and claim him the poor animal is here battling hunger fear and sheer despair and yet it has the magnanimity to believe in the good will of humans who might come to rescue him it is not ready to give up hope it is still willing to stand there and wait for some human being who would just come and rescue him the plight of the dog here is heartbreaking and yet in the time of flood nobody has the time or resource to save it people have their priorities and the reader is left to ruminate on the tragic fate of the dog you can't exactly blame chenna parent because his priority was his family and even then he did pull up the cat and the dog but unfortunately the dog didn't notice the boat slowly moving away and at that time chenna's first priority was not definitely the dog it was his family and somebody had called him from the other side so the boat had to move to another house what makes the situation even more sad is the dog's hope that he will be saved and the reader's realization that the dog is doomed we now come to the last part of the story that weak and anguished cry dissolved into the wind there was nothing to be heard after that except the interminable sound of waves no one turned back thereafter only the dog stayed peering at the boat till it disappeared from sight he climbed onto the rooftop once again growling as if bidding farewell to the world outside perhaps he was trying to say that never again would he love the human kind he lapped up the flood water and then he looked at the birds flying above he saw a water snake frolicking in the waves move towards him the dog swiftly jumped onto the rooftop the snake sneaked in through the crack in the roof left open by chenna and family the dog peeped inside through the crack and started barking gravely then he growled a growl filled with fright for life and hunger it communicated itself to the speaker of any language even maybe to a resident of mars a universal language the night was terrible with heavy rain and storm the roof started tottering in the waves the dog almost fell off from the rooftop twice 
Then there emerged a long head from under the water. It was that of a crocodile. On seeing it, the dogs started barking in great fear. There was also the sound of fowls wailing together from somewhere nearby. Where is the dog barking from? Haven't the people here moved out? It was from a boat carrying lots of hay, coconuts and bananas that stopped near the banana tree. Boy, the dog is likely to leap down. And then the dog leapt down from the rooftop and the man who had scrambled up went straight down into the water. The other guy helped him into the boat. By then the dog had swum back to the roof. He shook himself dry and continued barking with renewed fury. The thieves took away all the bananas in the plot. You'll get it, they said to the dog who was barking his head off. Then they loaded the boat with more of hay. At the end, one of them climbed onto the rooftop. The dog, not to miss his chance, bit him hard on the leg. He got a mouthful of flesh. The man shrieked in pain and threw himself back into the boat, even as his friend gave the dog a blow on his belly with a wooden pole. The dog's wail tapered off into a faint whimper. The man bitten by the dog was crying in the boat, even as his friend was seen rebuking and consoling him before the two left the place. It was quite some time before the dog barked again, his face directed at the way in which the two had left. It was close on midnight. The dead body of a huge cow was washed atop the house. The dog was watching it from the roof. He didn't go down immediately. The cow was being moved gently by the flood water. The dog growled. He tore open the roof thatch and slowly went down. He bit at the moving body to bring it closer to himself. Yes, here's God's plenty. He started eating at it with great relish. It was an unexpected blow. No sight of the dog. And the cow floated off after a leap and a dive. There was no sound after that except that of the storm that was howling away and the croaking of the frogs and the clamor of the waves. Otherwise, it was quite silent. The soft-hearted guard did not hear the groan of the dog after that. Rotten corpses floated across the water here and here. Some were being eaten quietly by crows. There was no sound to breach the quiet. No let up in the work of the thieves either. All bare and empty. After some time, the hut went tumbled and plunged beneath the waters. Nothing could now be seen above the vast stretch of water. The loyal dog had guarded his master's house till the very end. Now he too was gone. The house stayed above water until the dog's capture by a crocodile. It was as if the house didn't go down before because of him. Now that he too was gone, the house sank under the water. Now the floodwater started receding. Chenna came back, swimming to his hut in search of his dog. There, under a coconut tree, he found a dead dog's body, gently moved by ripples. Chenna examined it, turning it from side to side with his toe. Was it his dog? One of its ears was missing, and the body was all rotten and discolored. So towards the end of the story, you see that the dog is weary with fatigue and hunger, and yet it doesn't hesitate to guard the house that the master had left behind. Even though it is really, really scared of the crocodile that is circling the hut, when, it, when the dog sees the two thieves, it becomes very ferocious because it has to uh, guard the hut left behind the master, left behind by the master. The dog knows no other code than that of loyalty and it holds on to its principles till the very end. It is a very loyal dog. Even when the master has deserted him, the dog is still loyal to the master. Just when the dog is about to feed on the dead cow, it is attacked by the crocodile and one wonders whether it was a blessing in disguise for the dog. Maybe, you know, the dog was better off dead than remain forlorn and hungry in the hut. And uh, the author says, the house stayed above water until the dog's capture by a crocodile. It was as if the house didn't go down before because of him. Now that the dog has disappeared, the house also sinks under the water. The house had perhaps, you know, seen the dog's loyalty and stayed afloat just for the dog. 
now that the loyal dog is gone why should the house remain afloat and earlier in page uh, 17 he says the dog wails and probably the wail is to echo echo is to say that you know he would never again love mankind he would never again be loyal to mankind who had deserted him so cruelly and later uh, chenna comes to look for his dog when the flood water recedes uh, chenna comes looking for the dog and all he sees is its rotting body and he wonders whether it is really his dog he couldn't understand the true worth of the dog when it was alive and it is rather fitting that he is unable to distinguish the body once the dog is dead yet you cannot call chenna a cruel man because he was forced by his circumstances as soon as the flood recedes he does come looking back for the dog but all he finds is his dog's dead body let's take a look at the setting of the story it's a world that is besieged by water and the poor dog remains trapped in the lonesome hut the hut becomes the dog's refuge and his prison he is trapped in the hut but if not for the hut he would be carried by the water so all around him the dog sees visions of death and destruction and yet it manages to cling on to the hope that his master will return to him and the hut he guards the hut till the very end and doesn't seem to realize that his endeavors are hopeless even when you know, the hut is completely uh, submerged and the thieves come for the remaining bunches of banana and hay the dog still guards the hut ferociously and gets beaten up in return for his efforts the relentless water and crocodile here symbolize the potent and indifferent nature that do not heed the dog's pathetic please moving on to the characters in the story we have the dog and chenna the dog is a very noble character he is the epitome of loyalty and this is contrasted with man's ingratitude and greed the dog is scared and in terrible pain due to the pangs of hunger yet he never lets his guard down till the end he guards the house he guards a house that has been deserted by all and his final defense of the hut is extremely touching the two thieves come to take the banana and uh, hay and even then even when he is in mortal danger the dog still attempts to guard the hut the possessions of his master he guards the uh, hut and possessions of a master who has forsaken him and that too at the cost of his life Uh, coming to chenna he is the master of the dog at the time of uh, danger at the time of peril he leaves his dog behind and escapes with his family but he is not exactly a cruel man it's just that his priority was saving his family when the flood recedes he does come looking for the dog but by that time the dog was already dead let's look at the themes um, the first theme is that of loyalty the story highlights the dog's loyalty which is contrasted with that of the calculating nature of human beings the dog shows unconditional loyalty but humans will show loyalty only when it suits them the dog knows only loyalty and does not understand why its owner left him behind he knows only to remain in the hut waiting for a master who might not come the author here lords praises the loyalty of the dog who is depicted as much more noble than the human beings in the story the second theme is nature's indifference to suffering when there is a natural calamity there are only victims as none can escape the implacable force of nature it is rather unjust that the dog uh, dies such a gruesome death but that is the rule of nature you can say the dog was so loyal it was such a sweet dog it shouldn't have died such a terrible death the crocodile shouldn't have eaten him but this is the rule of nature chenna was also forced to abandon his dog as he had to save his family first so in times of calamity people need to survive and that is something that is shown in the story only the dog you know remains aloof to the concept of survival it doesn't think about survival it is always thinking about serving its master 
we have come to the end of the lecture that's all for now thank you